My name is uh, Rufian de Vries, as mentioned uh, before. I'm going to talk about web, money, and an API. But before uh, jumping to the API, uh, let's talk about web and money first and uh, uh, see how we get to the API. And uh, for getting to the, the API, let's go back in time a bit because when I think about web and money, I just start think about advertisements, of course. If you go uh, back to uh, 1994, there was the first online ad. And I can't read any comments, but the pub quiz question is, does someone know for which company this ad was? And bonus points for which website this was? Jasper, are there any uh, <laughs> clues? <laughs> okay. Well, this was from AT&T, the ad, and it was on the Hot Wired magazine website, uh, which is now still Wired magazine. And I wanted to, to test out if this actually worked, and apparently it works. So it's still uh, working nowadays, as you know, of course. Uh, well, we go on a few uh, years later, because in 1997, that was the moment that I started making my first websites. Uh, back then I was 10 and as you know in that time you uh, you had internet at home but it was via the phone network so you had to pay by tick so that was quite expensive so luckily enough I had a chance to spend my Saturdays in the technical university library where you can just spend the whole day on a Windows 95 computer making websites of course and almost 25 years later I'm still making websites can't get enough of it. Uh, now doing this at uh, Q42, uh, we are in The Hague and also in Amsterdam, but now mostly at home, of course. And we are making websites and uh, apps for clients. And those clients mostly uh, are business to consumer, so directly to uh, clients. And most of the clients, of course, uh, want to build, uh, generate revenue. And some of the revenue is generated by online content, not by selling products, but online content. And that's even increasingly in these times because we have some clients in the museum world, like Rijk Museum, and you can't go to the museum right now, but, but the museum wants to get customers uh, to get in touch with their paintings. Uh, but they also want to earn some revenue because they are losing a lot right now. And also another client of us that's uh, nation that's the biggest newspaper in kenya and last year we built a website for them and well they still get money from ads on the website lots of ads actually and it has one big advantage it is a good steady way to get revenue and yeah you can sort of predict how many visitors you are going to uh, get and then predict how much money you will get but this also annoys people, of course. And it has a huge impact on your brand because this looks all nice, but the cool blue ad here is a bit annoying. Uh, and as developers, we know ads make the page slow. So if you want to have a good lighthouse score on this page, good luck with it, with the Google uh, network. And increasingly it's becoming a problem because a lot of users are going to use uh, extensions or browsers that even block ads. So it doesn't work that well. Maybe there's also one advantage of ads, of course, for a user, because I get to know new products, because now I know that the OnePlus can be sold at Cool Blue. Can be a nice feature of uh, looking at ads online. Well, this is one way of uh, getting uh, uh, revenue uh, based on your content. Another more uh, increasingly popular one is subscriptions, as you may know. This is a screenshot of an article on the Financial Times of Holland. And you can only read this article if you're logged in and if you have a subscription. But actually, this subscription is quite expensive. It's 45 euros per month. So I don't want to pay for that, but I also like to read other newspapers. And they also have subscription models. So this is becoming a bigger problem every time a new website 
introduces subscriptions. Because the more subscriptions there are, yeah, users have to choose because they can't take a subscription for every website they uh, visit. But it's, it's an advantage, of course, for the content creator because it's a steady revenue stream also for the future. And even in startup world, that's sort of, it looks like this is the only way to get money because all investors want to see subscriptions. So they have a predictable stream of money uh, for the future. For smaller websites, although, like a blog for recipes or uh, travel or whatever, it's way more complicated because it's not easy to set this up on your small website. It's costly uh, and it also will annoy people because I don't want to log in when I'm reading your recipe. If I need to log in, I will uh, go somewhere else. And another uh, quite common way is our donations and the most a uh, common one is, I think, Wikipedia. Uh, they only run on, on uh, donations. And the nice thing about this is you have to connect with your fans and make them love your product. And then hopefully in return, they will uh, give you some money. But it's a bit unstable for the future as well because you have to get that recurring donations running, but that's quite hard. Some recent developments, although made it easier because with cryptocurrency, uh, products like Steemit make it possible to donate uh, some cryptos uh, to content creators. So ads, subscriptions, donations, these are three common ways to, uh, to monetize uh, online content. But the question is, of course, are there other ways to monetize web content? because as mentioned before, some have some uh, side effects. And of course, the answer is yes, otherwise I wouldn't giving this talk to you. Uh, but before going to the solution, let's go back in time a bit uh, to 2016. Back then the cryptocurrency world was already uh, running uh, quite fast. So this is a selection of the cryptocurrencies back then. And there was the one thing about this, there was no single currency to rule them all. So every currency thought they had their own purpose. And some are still uh, going strong today. So probably it's still a case. And with it, because if I'm a Ripple holder and someone wants to pay me uh, from a Bitcoin wallet, yeah, you have to do something with it because you can't send Bitcoin to a Ripple wallet. You need to go to some exchange and do some things. And that's something that two guys at Ripple, Ethan Schwartz and Stephen Thomas also saw. And people might know Stephen Thomas because he, had, he owns 7,000 Bitcoin, but he lost his password and he only got two chances left. I don't know if he already found his, uh, his password. I hope it for him. He was back then the CTO at Ripple and they saw this problem with sending uh, money from one wallet to another wallet where the currency was different. So what did they about this? To fix payments between wallets. And that paper was called a protocol for interledger payments. Uh, and this evolved in the interledger protocol. It's a, it's a big subject, so I'll do a short introduction. Uh, it's too big to cover all of this now. And also I don't, can't cover it all because I don't understand it all, uh, but I can uh, explain the concept. So the interledger protocol. This is a protocol uh, for communication between blockchains and ledgers. And you can send uh, money over the wire, which is not tied to a single currency uh, company or to, uh, uh, to a country. And it's sending packages over the wire, just like actually the internet. And you can compare it a bit to email concept wise. If I know someone's email address, I can write an email to that person 
and send it to that person. And I don't need to know which email client or provider that person is using, in which country that person is living. I just click send and it sends to that person because I know his email address. And the internet protocol is a big So what they introduced is was a payment pointer. It looks like this. It starts with the dollar and uh, then some uh, some text as well. And this results uh, to an URL because the dollar sign is replaced with HTTPS. And this uh, points to a wallet. So imagine this case, I'm working at Q42 and my employer wants to uh, pay my monthly salary. So they have a, a bank with some money in it. And apparently that bank is also supporting the intellectual protocol. So they have a, a wallet account and they also got a payment pointer for this. So that's the wallet.bank.nl. And they want to pay me in euros, but I got a wallet, say at Google wallet, I get an app from it and I have a payment pointer from that wallet as well. But I want to receive Bitcoin. With the intellectual protocol, my company can uh, pay me in euros and send it to me in Bitcoin and don't have to think about uh, how that works. Because if we go back between the sender and receiver, there are one or multiple routers which does it for you. And the idea is that companies can jump in and fulfill that, uh, that router. So normally when you pay someone, you have to think about, okay, I have a, a bank account and I want to see someone with a PayPal account or credit card. How does it work? I need to find an exchange or a service. And with this protocol, with this concept, that's not needed anymore. And in this case, uh, paying my uh, monthly salary, that's just one amount of money at once. But because the concept is a bit like the internet, so sending packages over the wire, it also creates some more possibilities. And this possibility is streaming payments. So what if I'm not sending one payment, but lots of smaller payments just in a continuous row? Uh, if we go back to the example of uh, internet over the phone connection, a bit like ISDN back in the days where you paid for a tick or a minute. And streaming payments creates a lot of new business model opportunities for payments. So what if I want to pay for the seconds I listen to music or the minutes I watch videos, or I pay for the bytes that are, I'm using at an airport Wi-Fi? That's all possible with streaming payments. And so automatically, so I don't have to click every for every small payment again, like I approve, I approve. Also, I don't need to sign up, it just works. And this is browser technology, so it's covered by the browser. So this was all found out in 2016. So a few years uh, further, 2018. The two guys at Ripple, uh, they were really enthusiastic about the idea of Interledger. So they thought we need to do something more with it. And they also saw the problems with monetizing content. So they thought maybe this could solve that problem. So what they did do, they started a company named Coil. And Coil is a subscription service where you pay $5 per month via a credit card, and then they pay content creators on your behalf via the internet protocol. So customers take a subscription, uh, they visit the websites of content creators, and then Coil pays the content creators via the internet protocol. You can compare it a bit concept-wise with Netflix. So you pay a subscription for a net watching Netflix, uh, you watch the, the, the movies and Netflix makes sure that some money is going to the, the movie makers. And those content creators can be anyone, but Coil was focusing uh, on for rewarding content creators uh, to be not 
reliant on ads or on subscriptions. Basically, what they created is one subscription to rule them all, of course, uh, for the whole internet. But they want to do it with open standards. So they uh, want the intellect protocol to be a standard. But there was something missing because, yeah, you can pay content creators, but users need to visit the website of a content creator. So how does that, that work? So there comes the web monetization API. So while they were working at Coil, they also writing a spec for the web monetization API. And maybe for some of the, the new people here with, who are relatively new in this uh, world, there's one organization, the W3C, where all the specifications for all web APIs are created. And actually everyone who wants to create something can create something and form a group and write, start writing a draft. Like this is the first concept, the first proposal. If the organization is happy about this, it can go to a next stage. I don't know in the top of my head, there are three or five stages. And it, at some later stages, browsers can start to implement the draft. Because basically this document is, how should this API work? So that developers start implementing the rules, how this can work. So the web monetization API is the first version and that's still the case. So that's good to know. It's not in a single browser yet. When writing the API, they had a few principles. The first one is, should be very simple for webmasters to incorporate on their website. Also on a static website, so not only uh, on the non-static static websites. And it should use the streaming payments. That was one of the uh, requirements. And I'm not going to cover all principles, but one of the most important ones, which is relatively new because it's now possible, is interaction with the user should be optional. So normally, if you pay someone, you have to approve or accept that I'm going to pay you. This should be optional. And what's the, the reason behind this? If I want to uh, read a news article, for example, and it costs me 10 cents, I often think about, is this uh, worth it for 10 cents? And what they want with this API is to reduce the mental load about that. You don't want to think about it. So there shouldn't be a consent. So you pay without consent for, uh, to a content creator. And how do they do it? Because they use very small amounts of money, like a tenth of a hundred of a cent. And this is in the gray area of what's possible in law, because you're not allowed to, uh, to pay someone without consent, but that's apparently until an, a certain amount. And because this amount is so low, there are no rules for it. And probably that's because we used to pay, for example, with credit card uh, transactions, and the transaction fee for a credit card is quite high. So you can't do any micro payment with a credit card, but you can do it with the web monetization API. So that's what Cole proposed. So yeah, I can get money as a content creator. That sounds awesome. Uh, and there's an API. Well, let's start. So I have my own uh, website. I want to uh, incorporate the web monetization API. Where to go? So first thing you have to do is create a wallet. Uh, at the moment, there are two providers for a wallet. That's Uphold and GitHub. And there you can create one online. And you receive a payment pointer, the, the address pointing to your wallet. And the next step is to implement it on your website. So if you go to the head of a page, you add a meta tag with the name monetization. And as content, your payment pointer you just received from your wallet. And that's it, actually. You're done. 
you can make start making money that sounds so easy but yeah wait a minute that's from the content creator side but users need to come to your website and they need to pay to you so there's something missing so what's there as well in the content of web monetization there's also a provider and currently coil is the only provider yet uh, because they invented the whole thing but they're also looking for other providers but there aren't there yet so as a user uh, you need to take subscription from coil so that's five dollar a month right now and they created browser extensions uh, for almost all modern browsers where you can log in with coil and then you can visit the web page and then you can pay the content creator via coil okay this is the moment we just need to show it working of course uh, so we go to the first page so i created the page for this meetup and i want to earn some money still in the old world so i put an ad on the page but then i added web monetization to the page and i installed the coil uh, extension so i have a, a meta tag on this page and now you see that coil is paying, paying because it, this content is included in my membership so that's it so as a content creator now monthly i receive some money from the users that visit my website it's that easy so back to my presentation so how does it look like in code first you have the document dot monetization this is of course now added by the coil extension because it's not incorporated in chrome uh, but this is how it should look like and there is a monetization event start event where you can respond on so if you if a user doesn't start uh, having a payment screen you can still show the ads so now it's up to the user if they want to see ads or want to pay you directly well actually there is already one browser that has, has this built in that's the puma browser it's uh, based on chromium only for mobile and as you see in the left bottom corner you can see what's uh, currently uh, paid to the content creator of the website okay well this all sounds awesome but there's now a draft API, the intellectual protocol which is also a draft and there's one company, but there's something missing of course, because if you want to have traction, you need to have content creators that have content available where you can pay with web monetization. But also there need to be providers, there need to be tooling. So it needs to be quite big. So let's go to Grant for the web. So this is also what they thought of, okay, how can we make this bigger? How can we make this grow? So they started an organization that started with Coil, Mozilla and Creative Commons. And they started in 2019 and they have the goal to uh, build the open web further with web monetization. And apparently they got $100 million from somewhere. I don't know where it comes from, but they have it. And what I thought was, okay, we need to invite a lot of people with good ideas, give them some money so they can play with uh, web monetization API, build libraries, uh, incorporate it in their products. So that's what they did. Uh, so they gave grants to the so-called grantees. And until now they gave 100 grantees to uh, yeah, quite different uh, groups and organizations. And the, each grant was between $5,000 and I think uh, $500,000. Uh, and uh, we at Q32 also uh, re received a grant for this. And I'm going to briefly talk about that. And that's for a product of us that's uh, called Miklio. Miklio is a content platform for content creators where they can uh, create online experiences with large images, 
uh, and 360 images. And it's now subscription based for the content creator. So if they are going to, uh, to make an experience, they need to pay a subscription and the users that visit the website, it's free for them. So this is the top 2000 cafe, which was uh, live. It's still live actually, but it was uh, mainly live uh, in the last uh, end of the year. And you can uh, just play around here. And we thought, what if web monetization uh, could bring revenue to the content creators? Because they are creating really nice content, actually. And during this grant, so we made a project out of this for one month, the last December, we also did a usability test. And we also found out that a lot of people are actually willing to pay online if they receive something good in return. And I think this is good in return, but it's up to uh, the user, of course. So I'm not going to deep dive in this whole project, but I'll uh, share some links later if you want to read more about what we did. Uh, but we got to play with web monetization API and that in paid time. So that's even better, of course. Um, so I'll share some stories about it, what we like, what we didn't like, and what can be improved. So what we, re what we really like is that there's some innovation going on in this project, going around, around open standards. And I, as a web lover, I really think this is the way forward and not uh, make it all behind companies. And uh, yeah, I, I think that slows down the progress. And what I also like is that the W3C is also getting involved because they also received the grant as well as browser vendors. But of course, we want to, uh, to play with it for uh, Miklio. And one thing we didn't like is it's now a fixed uh, rate you get from Coil. So the, co uh, the rate is now 30 cents, a dollar cents, uh, sorry, euro cents per hour. So if a user stays for one hour on the website, the content creator receives 30 cents. But yeah, as Miklios, I don't want to be depending on a third party for my whole revenue stream. So that's quite a big risk for my company. Also, uh, this implies that every online content is worth the same. And in my opinion, that's, that's not the case. And yeah, it's the internet, so you can visit the website everywhere. But 30 cents has a different value in, for example, Thailand compared to Norway. So that doesn't work cross-border. So I think that should really be improved. So what we did actually is write a proposal for spec changes, where you can also add in a meta tag uh, what rate you want. And of course, that rate can't be too high. Uh, because, yeah, you want to keep in uh, what's possible in the law. But, yeah, there should be uh, something about that. And also the case with now COIL, it now provides for $5 each month, sort of subscription for the whole web. But if this is going to be more popular, $5 is not enough because you need to share it with more companies. So that doesn't work. And how does the business model of other providers look like? Because you now have one provider that's sort of for $5, uh, you get everything. So what's the business model of the next provider? The, the vision of COIL and Grant for the Web is that the provider uh, is going to be smart. So they decide for you what you want to pay. But that's very vague still. So. Yeah, it's in the, in the stage where we need to find out. And actually, because Grant for the Web is in the early stage now, because this is the first, uh, uh, the first round for uh, funding for a lot of initiatives. So they spent like 10 of 100 million, million right now. And they just want to learn from this. So they're inviting a lot of people to get something going on, get some traction and get some feedback from everyone. 
because they really they also know this is not going to be uh, the end case, but they have to start something. So I I get the point that yeah they need to do something, and it's easier to shoot on something than think about the right solution. So hopefully they get some uh, some more feedback. So if you have ideas about this, how this should work, let them know or let me know, because we're not all in this together and they don't know the solution yet, but we need to find out with each other what problems can be solved and maybe also which problems can't be solved. And that's another thing you could do today because you can start monetizing your website because yeah, you can create a wallet and add a payment pointer to your page and hopefully you get rich. And the easiest way to do that is uh, make me visit your website because then I'm going to pay you. So hopefully uh, this can help you a bit further, make you rich, I don't know, or just uh, for fun. So this was it from my uh, side. Thanks for uh, listening and watching.